Daily Dose of Daryl, Viewer's Digest, March 7th through March 13th, 2022. You know, you can turn into the information section and find out the places where you can fast forward to whichever day you would like to listen to during the week. We also have QR codes for the uh, channel, which you can scan, share with people, and also for the website. This week, we were going to focus on learning to simplify in various areas of our life that can help us move forward in life. Monday Magic, the real magic's in our heart. What time is it? Time to simplify faith. You know, believe it or not, there was an actual phone number that people would call to find out the time and temperature. (laughs) And believe it or not, the phone that people use was tied to the wall. Today, almost everyone carries a device that tells them everything. Most of the devices are such that you can talk with them and they answer. Some are called Alexa or Siri. Today, people want the news within 30 seconds of when it happens. We think that we are in control when we know the time, the temperature, the prevailing trends, the news, the moment it happens all around the world, and yet we walk through life by faith And we really don't know what time it is in our own life. This overload of information gives us a false sense of security. In reality, we don't know if this is the last day of our earthly life or if we're years away from the end. The question is, where do we place our faith? One thing that is certain, that we have this moment right now. So, the answer to the question, what time is it? The answer is now. That is all the time that is certain. Use your now wisely and have your faith placed in something solid and lasting. Matthew 18, 3. Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. More than mind belief, but life trust. Simplify your faith. Tuesday Truth. How are your conversations and words. Simplify words. There is power in the word, and the word is one of the main ways we as humans communicate. Our words can do a lot to help and to harm. How are our conversations going these days? Today there are two conversations in this dose that we're to examine. First, worry is the conversation we have with ourselves about things we cannot change. Too many people spend too much time giving too much energy over too many things that they just cannot change. It produces a state of worry. On the other hand, prayer is a conversation we have with God about the things that God can change. When we acknowledge that we are not in total control of the outcome, but are in control of our actions and approach, We can then surrender the ultimate outcome to the only one in ultimate control. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Move from worry to prayer. Simplify your words. Wednesday Wisdom, the voice of Joe Heather, who is your coach, Simplify your source. We all have coaches in our lives and not just in the sports world. We need to make sure that our coach is tied into a higher and reliable source. Here's a little time with Joe Heather Dodson, your Christian coach. Hello, I'm Joe Heather Dodson. I am a native of Randolph County. I live in Liberty and I run a business called Your Christian Coach where I do Christian coaching with individuals and leaders. Well, it's so interesting. Um, The Lord led me to be a communications professional for almost 25 years. And then I just felt the leading like he had something else for me to do. And so through a series of events, which we don't have time to sell, uh, I ended up being drawn to coaching because I felt like it was a fascinating process. I got to work with the coach and I fell in love with the process myself. And so I was drawn to it and I felt like the Lord was saying, this is your new thing. This is the new thing I want you to do. And uh, so I jumped in seven years ago and I did training, started doing it. And then I launched my business five years ago. Uh, this coming April will be five years. 
Well, if I look at it just from the coaching standpoint, one of the most amazing experiences that I had was I had a client and um, the client was working with me because they wanted to make a career change. And so we worked together over the period of time to, to talk about what that was and how to make that. And it ended up, we worked together for a year and had mapped out a plan and made all the efforts. And after a year in, uh, of her planning and, and preparing, she came to a session and said, you know what, I've fallen back in love with my current job again. I'm gonna keep doing this. And I remember just being so uh, amazed because I said, God, you'd never know what you have in store for somebody. They might be calling, thinking they're doing something else, and you say, no, this is where I need you, this is where I want you. So that was kind of a fun, interesting experience that I learned a lot from. So in my personal life, I um, was very surprised, uh, I think it was about eight years ago, that the Lord said to my husband and I, hey, I've got a job for you to do. I've got something new for you. And we were really shocked when he said, I'm calling you to adoption and I want you to adopt. And we were stunned <laughs> because we had got my, um, husband's youngest daughter off to college and we thought okay we're entering a new phase of life and the Lord surprised us and said I want you to do that and what an experience to see God's hand in so many ways making that happen and um, leading the children to us that he called us to and equipping us for something we weren't ready for could have never done it could have never done it if it wasn't for the Lord and now They've been with us six years, and to see how the Lord has transformed their lives, it's just an honor to get to be a part of it and a witness to it, and it's grown me, I think, the most out of all the experience. I've had a lot of experiences in my life, but it's grown me the most. So recently, I've been meditating on Psalm 139. And I've been really trying to take it into my spirit. And so my tip of wisdom would be um, read Psalm 139, but read it with the heart to realize that God knows you and that he sees you. And though the word love is not in that Psalm, it all speaks to that and that he loves you right where you are. He loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. And so if you, Look for God's love. Don't, don't put on a, a false sense of judgment. God has made a way for you, and he wants to have a relationship with you. And so, for me, the wisdom tip is, is be in the Word, but read it wanting to know God, not just checking off a list. Because when you check off a list, you don't really get anything from it. So, that's my wisdom tip today. My goal in life is actually not my goal. It is something that the Lord gave me a couple of years ago. I had already started on my coaching journey. I had changed jobs. I was already an adoptive parent and, and a wife and a daughter and a sister and a friend and all these roles. I was playing a lot of roles. When um, the Lord said, I need you to be a voice. And I said, I don't know what that means, Lord. I don't know how to do that. And um, so I've been uh, living into that calling to be a voice. And for me, it's to be an authentic voice of grace and encouragement for others. And so living into that um, as my authentic self, showing up where people are, and just offering the words of love and encouragement um, and reflecting the light of the Lord, I, I really feel like that's a part of it for me. So what I hope for my legacy is that my children would live for the Lord. I really take it seriously that we talk about the Lord, what his word teaches us, who he is to us, who we are to him. Really every day we talk about God in the morning, we talk about him in the evening, we relate him to everything we do. And so, you know, it's when you rise up, when you walk, when you're in the wayside, just wanting them to know who he is and that he loves them unconditionally. Um, he just wants them to choose him. And I stress to them that it's their choice. They have to make their own choice. 
Um, but there's a whole lot of blessings that come when you choose the Lord. And that's my legacy hope. I think the one thing that I would like to tell people is, you know, if you aren't sure what the Lord is calling you to in your life, all you have to do is ask him and hold the space and listen for the answers. And you're going to find that when you're walking around, when you're doing life. And just if you are a, a person who has chosen Jesus, you've got the Holy Spirit inside of you and he is going to guide you. And it might be when you look out at a bird feeder. Or it might be when you're talking with a friend, all of a sudden you're going to feel that stirring in your heart, that kind of a ping, like that's it, go towards that. And it's like I said a minute ago, when the Lord said, be a voice, I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> and that's okay. It's okay not to know and to say, God, I don't know. I don't understand this. You've told me A. How do I do A? And then you just rest because I can do all kinds of things in my own strength. But they are nothing compared to what God can do if I just rest in Him. And that's a spiritual rest, not a sitting in a chair, not doing anything. But just resting in Him, walking in faith. Um, you know, that's what the Word says. Uh, walk by faith and not by sight, right? So we have to just keep taking a step forward each day. And the Lord's just going to reveal it. It's like He said to Abraham, just go forward and I'll show you. He didn't say, this is the GPS coordinates. He just said, start walking. Start moving forward, and that's all you have to do as well. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Yet for us there is only one God, the Father, who is the source of all things. Thursday thrill. Is your life too complicated? Simplify your life. I resisted learning about computers until 1990, but then went into the Graham Library and asked to sit down at one. Aside from not knowing how to turn it on, my life has never been the same. I'll admit that it has enabled me to do many things I could not do without it. However, this machine invented to save us time has often just made the entire process way too complicated. I saw a cartoon of two ladies in a cemetery near a fresh tombstone discussing the dearly departed. The departed's wife said, In order to make an appointment, he first had to update his operating system, download an app, get a username, choose a password, log in to a health portal, navigate to messages, and write his doctor. By then it was too late. <laughs> too close to home? Sorry. But admit it. This has most likely become part of your complicated life these days. Learning to focus on what's most important and essential will not remove all the complications, but it will help simplify our lives. Matthew 6:33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Focus on the essential. Simplify your life. Friday Flashback are you willing to start over? Simplify your future. Many analogies have been used to describe life. A lot of people uh, think about life as a straight line that goes from birth to death. Today I want us to move beyond that idea and realize that life is more of a wavy line that has hills and valleys. It's more like a roller coaster than a bowling alley. In fact, one of the most important ingredients that a person can add to life is the willingness to start over and the ability to embrace that action. Perhaps you have fears that hold you back. Don't be afraid to start over. This time you're not starting from scratch. You're starting from experience. Just like the swimming clock at the pool that seems to be counting to the end. It is really counting to a new beginning. You can be counting the time that you are not only passing time, but after starting over, you can be counting the time that you have been enjoying a new beginning if you're willing to start over with a new life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Be willing to start over to simplify your future. 
Saturday Summary. You know, now is the time that we have. Simplify your faith and realize this is the moment that you have. Move from worry to prayer. Simplify your words. Make your conversations true. Joe Heather Dodson. Yep. Find your voice for God. Yourchristiancoach.net. Look up Points to Ponder on social media. Find her podcast at loveandencouragement.com. There are many coaches out there. Make sure yours is tied in to a higher power, to the source. Join her fun journey with God. Simplify your source. Don't let life's complications rob you of life. Simplify your life. Focus on the essentials. Don't be afraid to start over. This time you're not starting from scratch. You're starting from experience. Simplify your future. Saturday Summary. Monday Magic. Your faith. What time is it in your life? The time is now, the only time we have. The time is now to simplify your faith. Tuesday truth. Your words. How are your conversations? How are your words? Move from worry to prayer. Simplify your words. Wednesday wisdom, your source. Who is your coach these days? Make sure your coach is tied to the higher source. Simplify your source. Thursday thrill, your life. Is your life too complicated these days? Learn to focus on the essential. Simplify your life. Friday flashback, your future. Are you willing to start over? Life is a series of hills and valleys. Start your new life today with the experience that you've already gained. Therefore, you can simplify your future with a new beginning. Sunday Silence What have you done this week that moved you to a more trusting faith and taught you the value of this moment? Pause and reflect. How have you changed your conversations from worrying over things you can't change to praying with God who can change things? Pause and reflect. What did you do this week to find coaches in your life who are connected to the higher source, the provider of all things? Pause and reflect. What have you done this week to sort out your complicated life and begin to focus on the essentials of life? Pause and reflect. In what areas of your life have you managed to start over to help ensure yourself a brighter future? Pause and reflect. I am Darrell R. Peebles, the man behind the microphone, bringing you something fresh and new every day at the Peebles Motivation Bureau. We have three divisions, the digital, the real life, and the print. Look over the list and see where you might plug in and where I might be able to help you in your journey of life. Locally ordered books, I cover the tax and shipping, plus I sign them. Contact me directly for those. Also, this particular book has already started in the many people's lives. I provide group discounts for local churches, special gifts for the pastor, and know that I appreciate you, your support, and ideas. Be sure to contact me about any of these other opportunities, and these are my contact points right here. This is Daily Dose of Daryl, encouraging you to go out and have a great day. Make it a great day. It's the only one you have. I am responding to the free and gracious gift of God, using humor, the art of illusion, modern technology, and decades of serving God and communities to work every day to uncover the beauty in all people and experiences that come my way, endeavoring to educate, entertain, and inspire. Each dose on this channel can help move us toward a better healthier, and more informed mind, body, and spirit. I'm excited to be a small part of the expanding of our capacity to learn, love, and forgive, and together leave this world a better place for all. God bless you.